Hi everyone. Today I'll be showing you a common fault with a Hornby West Country, which also applies to their Battle of Britons and their Merchant Navy class, and how you can go around repairing it. I hope this is going to be useful for you. Let's get cracking. Hi, I've got several of these bullied Pacifics and they all seem at some time or another to encounter a certain fault uh, which is most aggravating. I don't know if any of you have had the same problem. You could be running your locomotive and you hear a click, click, click as the train is running. Another telltale sign is the wheels will do a quarter revolution stop another three quarters stop a quarter stop and so on jerky no matter how much you clean the wheels and do the contacts it still does it what's the problem well actually it's an idler gear that's an idler gear and as you can see just there Oops, get that back again. Just there is a crack. That's the reason why. When the gear worm engages with that, it opens slightly and jams. Now, it's normally just on this big gear there. But in this loco, it's also split there. So that's two lots which is a real nuisance. Now the parts are easy enough to get hold of. The only place you can get them is Peter's Spares. Um, you can send off for those and you also get the drive gear which goes on the, the centre drivers of the wheel. But all you need is this. It's called an idler gear. But how do we do it? Well, I'm going to show you. The second problem I've had is, as you can see, there's very few con rods on here. That's a simple reason because... The rivets keep giving out on the eccentric link. Now trying to get hold of replacement parts for the last two years for anything Hornby has been an absolute nightmare. It's virtually impossible. You have to go on to a well-known auction site and either bid for a complete chassis, which is a ridiculous price. I did purchase one two years ago from a guy um, who said they were selling new and when it arrived, it was anything but new. It had circular ends to the slide bars, which has shown to have been heavily worn. Um, dispute in, ensued. He was trying to say I was trying to rip him off when it was actually vice versa. He was advertising something as new, and it was clearly second-hand um, and filthy. And he came up with every excuse under the sun. Anyway, cut a long story short, I got my money back, but it was well over £40-plus. Pound. Yeah, a lot of money. But desperate needs, desperate measures. If you want it bad enough, you'll pay for it. And anything these days is only worth what you're willing to pay. And at that time, I was willing to pay for a new part, not a second hand. Anyway, I put in a search this week because I'm fed up of having engines not running. And lo and behold, -da, I managed to find a set of valve gear for this locomotive. Now you get everything for the loco. You just don't get the middle piece machine. You get the bottom pieces as well. Now, this is a weathered version of Plymouth. I've got two of these. This one I was going to renumber. Um, my advice would be, if you're going to renew valve gear, do the whole lot. Don't do one bit, because if one piece has gone through wear, you can bet your life something else is going to go through wear. So, renew the whole lot. Okay, so how do we do it? Right. Let's get on. Well, as you can see, I've already taken the front bogey off. And if we turn it over, see there's a screw there. Which we will undo. A bit more. That's it. Put that to one side. And then the loco 
a bit of effort will come apart. Although to me it looks like this one is actually falling apart. That's because I had to cut wires to get into this bit. Right, so there we have the parts. I'm just going to open up this new bit with a knife. Be very careful not to split anything. And that is the piece we want. Complicated, isn't it? Now, it's no good looking online to find something as an alternative, i.e. Can you get away with a Merchant Navy set of valve gear? After all, they're Bully Pacifics. The answer is no, you can't. And the reason being is this bar coming across here. On a Merchant Navy, that is solid. That is not there. So it won't fit. You have to have the proper one with this countersunk plastic piece in because that is where it fits in there. So the first thing we do, what I do, is fold it all back. And then I try to put on, because it's so fiddly, get these wires up. Try and get the pistons in. Now they will slide in quite easily if you want to, but I'm going to show you an easier way, which is undo the cylinder block. Makes more sense. Put that there. Lift off the block and then carefully Insert it all in like thus. Make sure got the valve gear coming out properly. As you can see, there's a little groove in there. There we go. Then Moving those wires out. We can start to get everything back together. Take your time, don't rush it. place and hold it nicely we put the cylinder block screw back in as you can see everything's jumping so I'm going to take it out again I don't want to damage it Seems rather stiff. I 
if I'm being honest. So that is on. Now then, from your little bits of nuts and bolts, you've got a small counter head screw which should... Ah, I say should, it isn't fit on. Now as you can see, that is falling out the hole. So I'm going to have to stop recording for a bit and just investigate what's going on. I'll be back soon. Hi, sorry about that. Yeah, what it was, there was two of these screws there. One was longer and shorter than the other. So I had to make sure that I got the right one and I was trying to fit the wrong one. So I've got the right one in now. I've also taken off the support, which holds the DCC there just so I could get there and show you how to fix that. Now these two wires here, which come off, they are going to reattach to the board. The red wire is there, and the black is there. So we'll do that later on. At the moment, I just want to show you how to get this done. Right, so we've got that on, starting to look a lot better. And then we start to remove the com rods. So we've got the nut and the washer. And we've got this on both ends. Now the size of these nuts is 2.5 mil. And you can get a tool like this from Expo about 4.95 on eBay. Hornby do one, but uh, it's a double-ended one. So you can, I think it's, it's either a three mil or a two, or a two mil on the opposite end, but it's a bit fiddly. I preferred these Expo, because I use this quite a bit. So that's the old valve gear off. Make sure you get it the right way round. So, that's the old one, that's the new one, and fitting is just like doing it in reverse. So like that. Pop that on. Yeah, you know I knew that was going to happen. I've got a habit of that. If you don't. get them in and start that a couple of turns it disappears at the end of the spanner anyway I'm trying to do too many things at once so let's do one thing at a time so if you're going to buy one of those expo tools off eBay it's a t expo tools EXPO tools 2.5 millimeter nut spinner nut spinner is all one word n u t s p i double n e r i just want to make sure you get that right there we go pop it over the center driver It's not. And that's in. Then we place the washer. It's all important 
next bit of the valve gear over there. At an angle to there. There you go. That is the rivet there. That one. Which keeps breaking. There. And unless you're very good at re-riveting, you end up renewing the whole lot. Now, as you can tell, I've done this wrong, as I've just noticed. So, I'll undo that again. I just noticed that's wrong. Take that out. Hello, Mr. Conrod. Then you go on. Hello. Yes, just come in. One moment. Okay, I'm back. Right then. That's on there. You'll see when you put it on, on that drive nut, on there, it's got a shoulder. And that's how you know to square up, that you've done it right. There we go. So that's that side complete. Around we go. That down. And same as before, take it all off. Shall we get the new part, which is that one? And then do that up. This one is proving very awkward. Hi, sorry about that. Right, so what I've done is I've revolved the wheels and I've now put that back on. So we've got that. Then we put the washer. Put the slide bar piston rod on. Just everything around. These really are fiddly to do.
it will find its own there there we go now then this wonderful idler gear to settle beggar where is it well it is actually under there remove that and there is your idler gear and to get to it what you have to do is at the back there's a motor retainer just there I'll put the light up there that's a motor retainer screw you undo that and then your motor being held with black tack will come off and then you simply lift out the gear drop in a new one now this one looks pretty over greased I mean that is a lot of extra grease I'll call that overkill and we drop that back on reattach that this is called a motor retainer that slides over the end of the motor Tighten it back up and your little cover, it's got a little groove there which matches to a groove on there. Pop it back on and there you go. Reattach the screw, job done. Now all I've got to do now is reassemble the loco, put her on test, but that is how you renew your valve gear. I hope you found it useful. So I've done this many times. If you want to know what the numbers are for the spare parts, um, the valve gear is an X9680. And if I remember correctly, the idler gear is X8849. And it shows a fixing Battle of Britain, West Country uh, locomotives. So that's an X960 for the valve gear and an X8849 for the idler gear. Okay, so that's everything put back together now. Um, as you can see on the top, the wires have been resoldered. The two screws are put back in on the top there. Blanket and plugs being fitted and all the valve gear is secure. Now to put it back into its body. And what we do there is you will see that there are two lugs there. There and there. And they have to line up with two lugs which are in there. is not easy to get in especially when you've got wires all over the place so there she is all back together and uh, as you see the name plate's been removed and so it's a coat of arms we're going to renumber and rename this one as 34001 Exeter I had one before um, which I did specially for someone I sold it to them and they never paid me so if you should see a model of 34001 in a filthy rundown condition at any exhibition around the country, please let me know because I would very much like to catch up with this person. 
He went under the name of Steve Smith, uh, allegedly from Herne Bay, who did a runner with over £100 worth of loco. I'm not happy. He bought a full VEP off me and paid quite happily. And when I did this one, he said, could I wait for the end of the week? I said, yeah, OK, no worries, mate. Sent it off. And that was the last I saw of him. He blocked me on Facebook. Disappeared off eBay and hasn't been seen since, although many people have seen the loco on the exhibition circuit. As I said, I will catch up with him. So if you see it, please let me know and the name of the layout and the club, and I will be there, and so will a few policemen escorting me. Hope this has been useful for you anyway. Take care. All I've got to do now is put the brake rigging back on, which is there, and we're done. See you later. Bye.